Hey everybody, it's Nick Dolman here again. And if you remember from our last video, we're gonna just dive right in. Our last video, we created um, a record using a custom HTML form and the Power Pages Web API. That was really cool, but let's take it to the next step where we wanna actually um, read a record and edit that and be able to change what we've already put in the system. Now, of course, we could use regular model-driven app forms and create a form component on the page to do that editing. Um, however, there might be, again, same situation as last time, there might be instances where you want to further customize that or you have certain use case requirements and using a custom HTML form might just be the better way. So let's just take a quick look. Uh, here, uh, here's that create record, the one we created the last video, um, of course, We'll have a link in the uh, the blog post, the corresponding blog post to go back to that. And it's the last video on the list. I'm sure you'll find it. Here I'm actually in a, just a regular list component that I uh, created in Power Pages. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go into here and I've actually got the regular edit my session, which is using the model-driven form, the model-driven app form that we created a form component from but I also have this update via Web API, and this is what we're gonna build. So here we can see that it's um, retrieve the session name and all the details. Now it's a little bit crunched on this form and we could play around with that a little bit and then I could just make some changes here and then um, submit that. Now the other thing to, to check out here, let me just show you the URL. Um, might be a little bit hard to see here, but notice I've also passed the GUID to this particular page. And that's what we're gonna to use to retrieve the record. This is important because how else are we gonna know what record to edit? So basically this is the same way you would use if you were configuring a regular form component. But here we're gonna be, again, same thing. We're gonna be passing that GUID and then from that GUID using Liquid to retrieve the record. Once we retrieve the record, we're gonna show that on the form. So what are we gonna to need to put this together? Let's take a look at our list. So we already talked about the parameter. We're gonna to need to pass that GUID parameter. We're gonna need a reference to the Power Pages Web API helper file. Same thing we did in the last video for the create. We're gonna to need to reference that. Um, like I said, we're gonna get that reference and we're gonna get the reference to the, the record using Liquid. Now there's a couple different ways we could have done this. We could have used that reference and used the, again, Power Pages Web API to retrieve that record. Or we could have done another method where we would have used the, like even an OData feed or something and kind of built another web API within Power Pages. Um, there is a method somewhere in Microsoft Learn on how to do this. I'm not gonna dive into that today. So just today we're gonna use Liquid, of course, HTML form that we're going to populate with that record. So last week we just had a bare bones HTML form where you could enter data. This one we're gonna have an HTML form where it's actually gonna display the data of a record and allow us to edit that directly in that form to save it. Of course, we're gonna need a, a script to call the Power Pages Web API to write back to Dataverse. And then we're also gonna need the corresponding Web API and table permissions configured. Now, this got called out to me on my last video about how I just used the star for the Web API and kind of went a little bit generic with the table permissions. I'm gonna do that again, but just so you know, in a product production situation, make sure you really tie down your security. You only expose the Web API fields uh, that you need, as well as the table permissions. So we're gonna we'll, we'll cover that when we get to it. But again, that's just reiterating that, and of course, a bit of CSS to make that form look a little bit better. So we're gonna keep all this code in its own web template. So I've created a web template here called the Web API Update Example. Uh, you can get that. I have that a copy of this full source code on my GitHub but let's break it down. Let's take a look at what this code does. So let's just shrink that a little bit. Let's uh, make this a little bit easier for you all to see at home. And first thing, um, I'll cover this first. This comes a bit later, but the CSS, yes, I embedded it in the web template. Yes, I should have created a separate file for it, but again, just being lazy. Um, here's some uh, styling that I actually got ChatGTP to generate for me, and I just plunked it in here for my HTML form. Uh, we have the other, the divs and the sections set out for our form. Very first thing we did, remember last time, is we're going to include that Portal Web API helper. Again, that is its own web template that I have here, which is something I copied directly from Microsoft MS Learn. Um, it is the helper file that actually calls the Portal Web API and passes that JSON string. But we're gonna keep this, we keep this separately because we can call that from multiple web templates. 
go back to the web template again. Next thing we're going to do is now remember, we're going to be passing the GUID of that record using the list component. But again, we could pass it in a number of different ways. It is going to be called the parameter name is ID and we're going to be passing the GUID. What do we do with that? We're going to assign that to a variable using liquid. Now this is going to happen on the server side. That's fine. It's going to make things run a little bit quicker. It's that request.params.id. That's that liquid tag that contains the GUID and it's going to create that session ID. So remember that we have our GUID for the record we're editing in that session ID. The next, so once we have that, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create this session object, which is the record from Dataverse that we're updating. And we're using entities.docsession. Doc sessions is my table name. And we have that square brackets where we're passing the GUID. What this does, this is a very powerful thing within Liquid. This basically allows us to go and retrieve the record. It's the same as a select star from, but it's within Liquid. We're not even using fetch XML. I could have used fetch XML here as well. Um, however, we're only retrieving one record. If I was retrieving multiple records, I would use fetch probably. But in this case, I'm only retrieving one record. So this statement on its own, very powerful. Basically, we're saying, hey, go and get this table with this GUID and assign it to this object. Got it? Cool. Next thing I want to do is correct this, uh, this site marker. Now, what a site marker is, we have some documentation on it now. Finally, I added it about a month ago. Um, basically, it allows you to assign a page and anywhere that moves in the hierarchy, if you move it up or down and around, if you have a site marker in your code, you don't have to go in and fix your code later. So this avoids a lot of that hard coding. The reason why we have this here is we have that list of, of sessions of these conference sessions that I'm using for my example. We're going to use um, the site markers and basically after we're done editing, we want to return our user directly back to the sessions page. So that's why we set up the site marker. Um, I have I was doing some testing on date and time, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Then, of course, we have the form. This is the HTML form that we're going to display. And now this is pretty basic, but this is gives you the ability to expand and do the special formatting that you want in your projects. Here I have the label. Again, I probably should have used content snippets for the labels, but that's fine for this example. That's not really what we're demonstrating. I have the input type here of the different types. So we have a text, a text area. Uh, we also have a, a date, time, local, a number different data types and we're going to do I'm going to do another video on data types because people have been asking about the option set and lookup which I don't have here but that's something where you're going to have to retrieve data to display data if that makes sense. So we have the text, the you know the name ID like I said last week or last video I like to keep the those names sort of aligned to the actual column names or field names. And here the interesting thing is is again using liquid I'm now displaying the value. I'm pre-populating the value of that form, but I'm using liquid because we retrieve liquid into that session object and I'm using the actual field name and displaying it within those squiggly brackets, a scientific term, and we're displaying that on the form and we're also making it required. That's an HTML construct. So pretty straightforward. So we've got the, the session name. If I see the text area here, it's formatted a little bit differently. But we're using the uh, the doc session description, which is the field name belonging to that object. So we're displaying that, also making it required. Um, and then for date time, date time local, again, the ID, but also knows the value here. I'm using filtering and we have some good documentation on MS Learn for filtering. Uh, and this is going to show the date in a specific way. If I didn't add that filtering, you're going to see this big, long string of numbers and your end users are going to have a hard time knowing how to format that or even for that matter um, the little control the the out of the out of the box of so the standard browser date control is not going to work so we put that in that's all cool and then find a duration which is just a number pretty straightforward we have this form and then of course we have this a submit which is a value which we're going to use as a trigger to run our script so let's take a look at that script so we have our script here. It's all in the same web template. 
uh, we have this ready function and um, what basically this means is load all this get all this stuff ready before we actually before you run the script make sure the forms completely loaded um, I know probably it wouldn't really matter anyway but some people are pretty quick so we just want to make sure that timing is good so we have that form and then it submits we're basically going to run the event we're going to prevent prevent the standard submit process because we want to do our own in this case we're going to do a redirection so then we're creating a new variable a record again it's an object so within that object we now have all of the we're going to be assigning these different values of that object or initializing that object using the html tags here so you actually see we are using those those html form um, fields and we're using the values of those to populate the values within that record object here now that we've got that whole record object the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run the patch and we're going to hit the doc sessions using again this is where that GUID comes in we need to know what record we're updating um, it's going to stringify that it's going to pass it along if it's successful I'm going to do an alert probably not good for a production system probably not even good for testing for demoing just give give this one to me okay so we're doing the record is updated we're also writing that to the console log again i was going to talk before like at some point i should do a video on using the uh, the browser tools but this is where we're going to see this and then here is we're going to redirect to the session page um into our back to the list of those sessions after it's done and if there's an error of course we're going to write that to the console log so we can do some troubleshooting overall pretty simple web template and then of course once we have this web template then what we're going to do is we will create a use this and create a corresponding page template i've already done that and then once we've created that page template then we would also create a new web page of of using this web template we really wouldn't have to do much there let's flip over to the design studio and see what that web page looks like so we're here we're in the design studio um here is that web page we created based on that page template based on that web template um, we've added it to the main navigation here of course i could move that around and it looks pretty straightforward we could go in and edit some of this uh, the titling and things like that um, whoops, sorry, that is the create example. I actually want to go to the update example. My bad. Uh, it looks a little bit the same. You notice I do have some of that liquid code in here. Don't worry too much about that. We have that date and time format all formatted. Um, and this is our update example. But And it is, sorry, this is what got me. It's not in the main navigation. It's in the other pages. Because we're not going to want our users to navigate this to directly. We want to get there because we want to pass the GUID of the record. How do we do that? So let's go to another page, Sessions. All right, so we're going to go to the session page here um, in Studio. Again, I've just used a regular out-of-the-box list component. If you want to create your own custom list component, you can do that too using HTML, Liquid. Um, I have a blog post from a couple years ago where I actually you know, built something using Liquid and HTML to overcome some some of the drill down issues and some of the things. So you could take a look at that blog. I might do a refreshed video on that someday. Um, but for today, I'm just gonna use the regular list component. I've added that to a web page. I'm gonna go into the edit list. And I'm gonna go to the actions tab. Now, quick note about the actions tab. If you're using the enhanced data model that's currently missing, that will show up again soon, but you can still use the enhanced data model but you're gonna to have to configure your list configuration using the portals management app. But for today, I have my list actions to create, which of course is going to that create form I created last time. The row actions, we have view details. Now I've set up both the view and the edit record here. They essentially do the same thing. There's kind of subtle differences on how they'll show up on the actual list uh, component. Um, there's a reason why there's two different things because this goes back to the olden days from ADX Studio, so it's backwards compatibility. Like I said, if a view details goes to a form where it's editing, you'll be able to edit it. Um, the edit record, same thing. If you go to a view, you'll be able to view it. Anyways, long story short, we're using the edit record and gonna go to a web page. And I'm gonna the web page I picked is that web API update example. So that web page I just created using that web template that we just walked through. 
and then the display label simply update via web api we're good we're done here this is configured and now if we preview this we're on the list of sessions i've already logged in with a user that has the appropriate permissions and i can just go through and i can go in and now i'm going to remember i had both of these things wired up my edit the session which is the out of the box standard form but i want to go to that update via web api and again like i showed you earlier on it's past that guid to the record and i can go in and make some changes so let's change that to 60. Um, let's change the date to somewhere in the future let's say here uh, or even today and then I'm going to hit submit and we see here I have that alert record updated that's good and then remember we're redirecting back to our list of sessions so that's all cool let's just quickly touch on the the uh, security settings that we need to do so here uh, again, if you start, really, I should just pick the fields that I'm updating. Again, I'm lazy, but you do want to make sure that you do need, the, you, <clears throat> you will need these settings, but here you should actually specify the specific fields, inner error is true, and that this actual table is enabled using the web API. And of course, the other thing, you could do this through Studio, or you could do this directly in the portal management app is under the security section, modify those table permissions appropriately as well for the particular um, sessions here. I've set it for global, yes, across the board. Don't do that. Be very specific on the users or the user groups that you want to be able to edit your records. This is just as important for Web API as it is just for regular security. So we're all there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you're able to take this information and be able to next time you're working on a portals project where you need to go that little extra mile and extend something, Hopefully this method will help you out. If you want to learn more about uh, extending your PowerPages projects and using techniques such as what I showed you today using custom HTML forms plus the Portal Web API, Liquid, JavaScript, um, including even just the advanced configuration of PowerPages, join my workshop on September 22nd in Copenhagen as part of Nordic Summit. And remember, by the end, if you book by the end of July, you get a 40% discount code using Boost, B-O-O-S-T, 40, to get 40% off. Hope to see you there.